Hello, Data Pipeliners, and welcome back to another episode of Writing Data Pipelines with Kedro. I'm your host, data engineer numero uno, and in today's episode of Writing Data Pipelines, we're going to be talking about testing. So testing is actually a huge topic that we can cover. Um, I'm not going to get to half of it in this one video. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to split this into several vid different videos. And in today's video, we're just going to talk about testing your nodes. So what is testing? So testing is protecting your software from any kind of future changes that may happen to it that will break functionality in the present, or rather functionality from the past. Uh, so the idea here is that as time goes on, you're going to need more functions out of your code. You're going to expect more functionality, or you're going to have to make changes to your code uh, that will um, that will integrate with other kind of functionality as well. The problem is, every time you make a change, you run the risk of destroying any kind of the old functionality that you previously had. Right? So you actually can, by, by accident or um, by you know, just happenstance, um, end up breaking your functions for the sole purpose that they are created for, um, and as a result, uh, you break your code. Um, it's, it's a very interesting issue. Testing is like a huge, huge subject. This is, a, this is an oversimplification of it, of course, um, but the idea here is to ensure that the code that you write actually does what you think it does. And that's the most important part of testing. Uh, and so today I'm gonna to show you guys how to do testing on your Kedro nodes. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, it's, it's actually pretty simple here. What we're gonna do uh, is I have a, a basic um, Iris data set pipeline. And uh, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be um, writing a test for a function that I've created. Um, and uh, we're gonna be uh, testing that test and showing you guys how that works. Uh, and in this project, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using Kedro hooks. Um, if you guys haven't seen Kedro, uh, Kedro hooks, uh, you can watch my video on hooks, a uh, previous one. And the particular hook that we're going to be using is Kedro wings. So that was the uh, plugin that was released the other day um, that I made a video about last time. So if you want to take a look at what Kedro wings does, how it works, uh, you can you can watch that video, uh, but we're going to use it today to just to make it easier for us to create data sets. Uh, so all you got to do is uh, from Kedra Wings, import Kedra Wings, and then add it to the hooks here. Um, so the, 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 the pipeline that we're going to be creating is going to be based on this thing called upper caser. Um, what, what this node does is it just takes every single element inside of a pandas data frame and it uppercases it for you. So we just create these like this huge, you know, we're just uppercasing things. It's really nothing more complicated than that. Um, but I think it's a it's a it's a function that we can use uh, in order to uh, demonstrate how testing can work. So we have our uppercaser function, um, and we have our pipeline here. So the pipeline again is a basic Iris data set pipeline. Um, and here we have this testable pipeline where we're importing uppercaser from our um, nodes uh, and then running it through the example iris data set. Then we're using Kedra wings in order to create a new data set for us, uppercased.csv. Uh, and then this pipeline here uh, is a, the default pipeline. So we're not using the data engineering and we're not using the data science pipeline. Um, the, the output here for uppercase should go inside of this 01 raw. And again, uh, this is not actually located inside of the catalog. That's just uh, the, the key feature of Kedro Wings to automatically create that for us. So when we do Kedro run, it'll go through, read the Iris data set, uppercase all of that data, and then I'll put it to the uppercase.csv. And so taking a look here, you may be wondering, well, obviously this node works. Like why do I actually need to write tests for it? Well, so again, the idea is that, sure, the node works right now, but you have no guarantee that this node will work the same way in the future. And so this is why you have to write tests. And so let's go ahead and write a test for this case. You can write a very simple test. Tests can get super complicated, um, but let's go ahead and make a simple case for it now. Uh, the Kedro 
projects are automatically created with a tests folder underneath your source folder. So you're going to open up that folder, this test folder. And then what you want to do when you're writing tests is you want to try to follow the convention. So if we're going to be testing a particular file, like for example, we're testing this uppercaser file right here, you want to write a test for that file inside a corresponding module folder inside of the tests folder. So this uppercaser function, uh, file function is located inside of the nodes module under intro to tests. So that's why we want to write the tests, the tests uh, uppercaser.py file inside of the nodes module underneath the tests folder. Okay. Uh, so here we have our, our test uppercaser file. Um, and the, the testing the testing library that Kendra uses by default is PyTests, uh, which does a really cool thing where it will actually scan all your directories for your, the tests that you have. Um, and so you can create your tests. You don't even have to register them anywhere. PyTests will automatically register them for you. Uh, it supports writing tests as single functions. So you can have like a single function test like this, where you say test uppercaser, or you can have your functions, your test functions located inside of testing classes. So you can have a test uppercaser class, and then you can have uh, various, um, various functions uh, underneath that class. And the, the only difference between these two is just a matter of organization from uh, PyTest's perspective. So it allows you to choose and select the different tests that you want to focus on when running PyTests. So this is very convenient. In our case, let's go ahead and just write it as a function. Oops, we'll write it as a function. Um, and we're going to use our test uppercase. Uh, let's go ahead and import pandas as well. So we're going to say import pandas as pd. Uh, because we're going to use a pandas data frame to test our function, um, if we go ahead and split uppercase split horizontally here, we can see the functionality of this guy is that it takes a pandas data frame um, it goes through every single row and then goes through every single column and every single row and then calls this uppercase on it and then outputs it, right? Uh, so in order to test this function, we want to first create uh, some test data. So we have our, you know, basic test data, basic data here is equal to, um, and we're going to create a data frame which contains inside of this data frame a list. You can have a list like this or we can even use a dictionary um, corresponding to the column. And the column is going to be names. And then inside of this column, we're going to have multiple values. So let's have a value John. Uh, let's have the value Mike. Um, and let's have this in David. Um, and so what you can do is using the uppercaser function. So we're going to go ahead and import that function from our nodes. Um, and then we're going to pass in our basic data. So now what's going to happen is we're going to get an output here. In order to create a successful test, you want to make sure that you assert something. So every single test should be asserting something. It should be saying, hey, this thing is supposed to do blank, right? And in this case, we're going to say test uppercaser, actually uppercase, is uppercasing things. And so we are going to make sure that the output from our function equals. And so this is actually a built-in feature of uh, Pandas data frames that allows you to just make sure that two data frames are equal. We're going to say this data frame that we're getting should equal a brand new data frame that contains the same list of names, but uppercase as John, Mike, Dave, right? So we've done, we've done, uh, the actual uppercasing manually um, in order to create the output test data for this John, Mike, David uh, basic data input. So now, in order to run this test, all we have to do is we type in Kedro test. And so Kedro will then automatically go through our testing folder and then run the test for us. And as you can see here, we have all of our tests to run. Um, Kedra already comes with a, its own basic test, these tests run. And then it also comes into here with our test that we just wrote, this test uppercaser.py test. And as you can see, uh, it went through, it had no problems. Um, 
it's good practice also to make sure um, to actually test your test. So you want to make sure that your test works. And in our case, let's go ahead and just um, lowercase one of those letters. Um, and, in, and then we're going to rerun this guy. Um, what's really cool too, and this should fail, we should have a fail. And then you can see we failed. So that means our test for our test has tested that it works. <laughs> Um, and something that's really cool here is that actually PyCharm comes with PyTest functionality too. Um, what you can do is you can actually use PyTest here. Uh, and then instead of using a uh, script, class, script class, you can actually you, you type in source here instead of Kedro in order to run the Py. Uh, PyCharm allows that, that integration with your PyTests so that your test can show up right here inside of the PyCharm interface. And as, as it says here, we've broken our mic. Uh, and it shows us our, our diff. It's a little bit hard to see here, uh, but what we can do is we just uh, fix this guy here, change that to a capital I mic. We can rerun our test and we can see that it actually works just fine. So that really covers the basics of uh, making sure that your functions are correctly uh, written and are running correctly as well. Uh, and this, in this ensures that your code uh, and your basically uh, your pipeline will be safe for any kind of future changes. So uh, that's it for today's video. Thanks a lot for taking a look. We'll be covering more testing in the future. Uh, but for now, I think this is a great little introduction for how you guys can write your tests and how you guys can run your tests to make sure that you guys are writing better data pipelines. <laughs> so if you like this content, just make sure that you button that like, sub that scribe, and ring that ding if you want to know when we are pipelining. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.